Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee and Haley Overtime, the podcast brought to you by Damiano Pizza, Pasta, Beer, Bourbon. It's located in Lexington, Kentucky. It's at 503 South Upper Street, across from the Target on campus. I'm looking at photos of the pasta dishes, the pizza. Haley's favorite is the margarita, but she also adds pepperoni to it. Y'all, that's the cheat code. Add it. Mm. You've heard me talk about it. Just do it already. What are you waiting for? My favorite is the coach because it has all the meats on there. You should see the line of people that love the coach. It's huge. I've converted a lot of folks. And they all line up? They line up They line up for it. It is really, really good. Sometimes we have people line up just to watch me eat it. And you know what? To each his own. Mm. No, that pizza is really good. So go see our friends at Damiano. So delicious. It's a great place to grab a bite to eat for lunch. And the pizza deal where you get $4 off is crazy sometimes. You can Why do you get take, $4 off? Well, that's something that they do on occasion. When? Yeah. Well, just I'm, randomly? Just, I'm looking you... at a review and that's what it says. I do know that at their happy hour, you get half, uh, what, half off. Is that what it is? What's a happy hour deal? You are boozing there all the time. How do you not know? From 11 to 6. Yeah. Yes. And if you sit at the bar, I believe it's something crazy. Just go. Go check it out. And thanks to our friends at Damiano for sponsoring today's episode. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm struggling. The change of seasons. I like, I'm having just bad allergy trouble. My head doesn't hurt so bad. I'm just sneezing a lot. Like yeah. I'm, I'm sneezing, which you know I love. I love to sneeze. Yes. But I'm just like, what is this about? So anyway, happens all the time. When I was a kid, my mom said I always got really, really sick in the fall. I'd always have a horrible cold in the fall. Yeah, you look like one of those sickly kids. And I mean that with uh, a lot of love. Do you? Yeah. Really? Like I feel I want to I feel bad. Like I want to take care of you. Oh, like get that girl a blanket and a hot, hot cup of cocoa. So right now I look that way, or I look like I would have been a no, sickly child. No, you no you don't. Now, yeah, as a kid. I okay, think okay. A little too skinny. What? Need some meat on your bones. I was. I love. I was. I should have had a coach pizza back then. That's the meat that would have brought me yeah. through the illness. Right. No. So that's what's going on with me. Otherwise, um, it's rainy today, which made me want to stay in bed. Mm. I didn't want to get up. I wanted to hold my little doggies. You know what I had uh, yesterday? Uh, because it the rain. A complete mental breakdown. Yes, and I <laughs> found myself naked in an alley. <laughs> But that happens at least once a week by no. choice, so why wouldn't I go back there in my mental deficiency? No, I hadn't had this combo in a while. I was watching Monday Night Football. I uh, watched it, too, and then I fell asleep and saw the score. Yeah, the Bengals are 0-3. They've got the one hell? of, I mean, my God, they got one of the best offenses in the league. Yeah, they, between they Jamar got, Chase, they Joe got Burrow, the top T. Three. Higgins. They've got the best receiving core in the league, undoubtedly. Yeah. You don't, I mean, you've got two number one receivers on the same team, and then you got that other kid. What's his name? I love saying his name, but I can't remember it right now. It's like Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. No, no it's not but it's Ayahuasca. something like that. That's that weird drug. But it's something like it that. It isn't. It, it's like, e, uh, yeah. It's got a lot of letters in it, and I don't really know. It's how to say. Uh, I don't yeah. know. It's fun to say. Yeah, it is fun to it, say. He's like, is what is he, Polynesian or something? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's got, he's got all these weapons and uh, running backs are good. Hello, Miss Joe Mixon. But you got a defense you can't tackle. Yeah. Put some grannies out there to wrap people up quicker. And guess who else is zero and three? My Tennessee Titans. Yeah. Like what? Well, bingo. I mean, the Titans haven't had as great a. You, you know, I, they made, they made it to like what what one of the I, a, I, championships a couple years ago. Not the Super Bowl, but well, the Bengals are. But the, but Bengals, the Bengals are, are good. legitimately. Uh, they were supposed to be in the Super Bowl this year. They have the weapons to do it. I don't know what's going I on with the defense. To load the weapons. The thing about the Tennessee Titans, and I love to watch them play because of Will Levis, but, former University. But of Will Levis right? is like watching. I mean, good God. You literally don't know if the worst thing you've ever seen is about to happen or the best yeah. thing. I, I've seen him drive the offense down, and it's like, look at this. Dude, we he's gotta, nailing it. He's an NFL quarterback. How about that? And then he'll get wrapped up and decide to throw something behind his back that gets intercepted for a pick six. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, you know. don't do that in the backyard. You do it nude in an alley. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. Anyway, okay, so you hadn't had this combination in a while. Excuse me, I interrupted. You're watching the Bengals Monday night. Chili <laughs> and grilled cheese sandwich, same time. My goodness. Heaven. No, wait, did heaven. you make this at home or were you somewhere? You no, know I did not. I didn't think so, but I'm sorry. When you said you were watching the Bengals in my head, you were on your couch, but then when you brought food into play, I was like, mm-hmm. you most certainly, you were at an establishment. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, chili with a strip crunch. club. You were I love strip club chili. It's the best. <laughs> Especially buffet style, right below, oh my right below the stage. The sneeze guard, <laughs> right below the, sna- the stage. Yeah, yeah, no, so you had, now, okay, now the chili, did mm-hmm. you have sour cream and cheese on it and a grilled cheese, or was it just chili and then you're dipping the cheese sandwich in it? Uh, well, it, the ch- actually, the chili was so thick, you couldn't really dip it. You kind of had to spoon it? Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah, it was a very hearty chili. But they put jalapenos and um, oh. cheese and sour cream oh. and onion and oh. all the things that oh. spice up my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I did it orally this time. That's good. Proud of you. Uh, let me, what are you doing? I'm looking for a, a text message I got. Um, here it is. Hello, Lee. It's time to save America. Yesterday, love those political texts. Yesterday, last week, we were talking about hand soap. I believe on the podcast. Were we? We yes. talk so much. Well, what was the context? And I said, I don't know. You were talking about hand soap. I, you know, like, I brought that up. You, that, you never you. wash your hands. You probably like to microdose dirt. You're I, like, if I can get a little dirty, then the dirt won't get me. I am healthy, aren't I? Not I'm really. I'm not the one who has allergies. You do. You literally went to the doctor a couple months ago, and he was like, you're di- good as dead. <laughs> he said because I'm fat and lazy. Not yeah, because- so what do you mean? You're healthy. My immune system. Nothing about fat and lazy, which let me just clear up. I didn't call you either one of those. You just called yourself that. Yes. But that's how Makes I... Makes me be like, man, he's healthy. But I, uh, well, I, you know, but I've, I've changed my ways since really? then. Really? I'm a Greek Adonis now. Oh. In three weeks time. In three weeks. Okay. So anyway, whatever. Last week we were uh, allegedly talking about hand soap. Talking about hand soap. Okay. Yes. And then uh, my cousin, Will, who is a fan <laughs> of the podcast... Said, our church is on board with your soap preference because I told you about the soap that men use and you acted as if I was a nut. But apparently at his church, they use that. That's what I was talking about. Go, Joe. Yes, you did bring that up. And at the time, I thought, what the hell is he talking about? Go, Joe. But now that your lovely, upstanding cousin Will has said it, I do support. Go, Joe. Now he goes to church. Do you you go to church? (laughs) You know I do. Your dad sent me your desk. Yeah. I did see your cousin, Will. Will, I mentioned it in a Driving Me Crazy, but I don't know if it made the final cut because our editors, they were ruthless in the edit bay. Yeah. No, I um was driving because his cousin Will's house is near to our office. Let me go ahead and give the address out. Mm-hmm. No, and I was driving by, and anytime we're on that street, Lee's like, okay, one of these is my cousin's house, but I can never remember exactly which one it is. They're all very cute. But now we know. Now we know because it's as behind, I drove by. It's behind the green door. It is. It is. <laughs> What's behind the green door? Yes. You know what that reference is, right? Isn't that Wizard of Oz? No. Oh. No, ma'am. The Green Mile? No, ma'am. No. Willy Wonka? No, ma'am. Then just tell me. It was a famous pornographic film that oh. it came out around the same time when you'd get these cult followings of certain pornographic films, like that one behind the green door, and the other one was Debbie Does Dallas, you know, all that. Oh, kind of, the classic. Those classics. Yeah. Well, behind, but what makes that movie <laughs> so wonderful with Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, I was like, he was in that adult <laughs> film? I didn't know no, that. No, is that he's playing a character from that age, you know, he's the... And he's going, what's he's doing that little song and dance oh. on a variety show? What's behind that green door? What was behind the green door? You don't want to know. Intimacy. <laughs> anyway, so I was driving down the street and I look and there's your cousin Will on the phone pacing the porch. Doesn't look stressed, but was it looked like a business call. You know, you can just tell it's like someone he was well, he's gesturing. Because I know what he's trying to do, hide from Amy the fact that uh, he's negotiating to deal with FanDuel. <laughs> do I have to pay it all now? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> anyway, so now I know which one is your house. So now Lee and I, when we're filming a driving, because you one time, Will, caught us on your door uh, ring camera when I've conned Lee into helping me walk both my corgis around the neighborhood one day. Uh, when I do bring them both, I usually con Lee or any other staff member to come with me. Kelly falls victim to it a lot. Does she? But she loves the dogs. You... Well, <laughs> are you about to say, here comes from the author of lies, what are you about to say? <laughs> Nothing. I know you love them too, but you like are irritated with them sometimes. You're like, oh, no, I, come over here. Kelly's like, whatever they do, it's perfect. Because that's how I Charlie feel. and I have had a breakthrough about a you, week ago. You have. You were very upset that Charlie, my little puppy, now, didn't like you. And a matter of fact, let me, let me tell you how <laughs> advanced we are <laughs> as we break down post-game film. Charlie, you walked in and Charlie said, okay. 
he waited for me at the door. Now, probably because you smell like beef. No, because I feed him beef. I'm gonna feed him whatever I, I'm eating. Beef. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah. Well, now that we know which one is your house, we'll probably do elaborate skits in front of your house, just so later when you get home, you can watch it on your yeah. on your ring cam. It'll be a reenactment, a clean reenactment of what's behind the green door. Yeah. This is more teal, I think, isn't it? Stop giving away details. Anyone who drives by any street in this town and they see a teal door, they're going to knock and be like, does the cousin of Lee live here? <laughs> well, you have to paint the thing, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. You have so much deodorant on your shirt. I know. On the front, somehow on, on the, the fr- sides, well, there's a little bit on the back. I tried. Like, did you put it on? I, I made the mistake of putting deodorant on first. And yeah. then I went, oh, on it i've done this now <laughs> i got so i was trying to fold the shirt oh it's the it's and, so embarrassing and put I it that. on yep. i was doing you know movements like a maestro <laughs> yeah. conducting the you do look like you're conducting. the amsterdam Ooh. symphony and i'm trying and then i think that's what happened yeah it's like the fact that it's on the front is so confusing yeah, I know. turn this way a little bit i do think you have some like you have so much down the back, like down the center I back. Don't know what to do? What? I, I, it is it is the bane of my existence. There is no way to put. No, the I other honestly one. think you should win an award for. I think you got the most deodorant anyone ever. How has. do you get it off? I usually go like this. Yeah, I don't think I that lick works. my fingers, but you can only lick them once. Then you got to transfer to the other. Because if if you lick and rub, and then you lick and rub, so again, I've got two shots. Yeah, then you've got deodorant. I got to lick fingers, your and then hand. You're tasting peach blossom or whatever the yeah. hell it is. So I'm gonna have to lick your hand and then the staffs. No, just at that point, just go wet a paper towel. Well, why don't you just say that? But then what, when you do that, well, for then, me, it, usually two wipes is enough. I don't get have a per- whole speed lady because speed because you going. don't have a phobia of smelling bad. Which you should. What? Well, I mean, you're not always fresh as a daisy. Yes, I am. What are you, what are you saying? Are you being serious right now? <laughs> no, you're most 90. If we've done an extremely athletic shoot, yeah. Do I think I smell the freshest? No, I go home and I shower. I am so sorry. But well, on a daily basis, I... I said 98% of the time you smell What's the happening on the 2%? Stress sweat. Ew, you just double licked. How does that deodorant taste? Oh, I got coffee here. I'm good. You're the weirdest. Um, all right. Well, That's not, is that working? I can't tell. I went to Costco last night. Oh, here we go, people. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I don't even know. Here comes well, hot podcast action. Well, you just what what? Oh, you think your deodorant problem trumps all? Anyway. What? Costco. Well, I have nothing really to say. I just try to fill dead air because you decided now was the time to really dedicate yourself to cleaning like a cat. You're like a little pussy cat. <laughs> What's behind the green door? <laughs> What's behind that green door? <laughs> I've told you my favorite title of a real pornographic film, and I only know about it. I've not seen the film or the jacket of the old VHS that it used to be on, was my favorite podcast, My Favorite Murder. She said one time when she was a kid, she snuck into the adult section at the video store, and she tried to clock as many movies as she could. And the only one she really zeroed in on was called Naked with Shoes On. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Okay. laughs> so that's my favorite. I yeah. get, She's like, I'm 99% sure that's what it was called. She said, I was a kid, though, and I was just like trying to see all that I could see. I remember when I was a kid, I saw some movie with Paul Newman, and he played the governor of Louisiana. I can't remember the name of that film, but yeah. he kept his boots on while making love. Well, you know, if danger breaks out, the shoes are the most important. Mm. I would feel like for a man, shoes and undies would be most important. Like, you don't want your... That's what's unfortunate for you guys. It's out there. If you know what I mean. Well, it depends on how cold it is. <laughs> if it's a wintry battle, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Well, why, why is that a why bad thing? Why don't you have to go get that checked once a year? What do you mean? Like women, we have to go to our, get our, what we call our annual once a year. Well, they, go get it checked I, out. I think most physicians would prefer you do check your prostate once a year. But do That's an you inside job? Do you, <laughs> but like men, why don't you have to go and get it checked once a year, or do you? And you're just foregoing. You're supposed to do an annual, and that would be part of it. Especially at home or at the doctor's office. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I buy a kit. 
<laughs> well, I don't know what, where, it, I'm sorry. I know very little about men's health. It's just your general practitioner. Besides that, I'm not looking at the picture of it right now. <laughs> It's your general practitioner who does the thorough exam. But a lot of that, like even prostate health, they can check with the, uh, what is it, the PSA thing. PSI. Yeah, the PSI. Pressure per square inch. Yeah, per square inch. Um, See how much air you got in there? We learned one time when we did a men's health segment on the show that your prostate never stops growing. That is correct. Well, it yeah, in more than like every prostate. You've started so many sentences Well, there. because I want to get this right. Every okay. prostate ends up. With cancer. Yeah. But, but most, most people die before it happens. By the grace of God, you're yeah. already dead. Yeah. Guys, look, look. What are you looking at there? I, was I write down notes because I have to write the synopsis of this. Oh. Yeah, and and my phone corrected prostate to prostrate, which is one of my favorite yes. grammatical mistakes people make. I think my dad said that. Look up men's health. Guys, take care of yourselves. Men are notorious. Stereotypes exist for a reason in a lot yeah. of cases. Notorious for not taking care of themselves. Because it all seems so unnecessary to us many times. And and Well, hopefully you'll die before yeah. the cancer yeah, sets in. I mean, <laughs> that is my hope for you. Right. No, but like unless you have a problem. And even if you have a problem, you're very like, I don't want to go to the doctor. Yeah, because you know. Because you know what? You because think it shuts the, your life down a lot of times. And, and it feels unnecessary. I'm you not, think I, I like I, going to an annual? You think oh, I like that? Yes, you do. You love to. <laughs> you love drama and chaos. Yeah, Lee, I love drama and chaos. All women, every year, we throw a little party when we realize our annual's the next day. Because it's, you're, you. Just wait. Me, Nikita, Bridget, and Kelly, we're going to schedule ours on the same day and throw a massive party in here of like, guess what tomorrow is? I mean, when, when bad news comes your way, heaven forbid it ever does, but it's like, okay, what are the steps? We must, oh, and, and I got to tell my friends, and we all take, oh, and there's support, and here it comes, and we're doing whatever they tell me to do. Men, on the other hand, feel what? differently about it. It's like, well, wait a minute. you Nobody's doing nothing unless I approve it. And I, and I got nobody to talk to about it. It's not like I'm going to call a buddy. How about the doctor? <sighs> You're the dumbest and I person don't who's know ever lived. <laughs> if that guy knows what he's doing. And trust me, when I say that, I mean, I, listen, I'm Amer here. <laughs> America's got wonderful doctors, but there are a lot. There's a lot of quackery out there. I watched a documentary. Oh my God, are you on speed? <laughs> uh, two days ago. Oh, I should put that in my weekend watch list. You should. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. But it was about medical devices. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's right. <laughs> I just get to it already. There, they went through. You three speak at a thousand words a second, and then you slowed. <laughs> they went through three or four devices that have done irreparable harm to people, especially women. By the way, one of them was called Eshure. You heard of this? No. It's a fertility. Well, it's supposed to create. Stop you from getting pregnant. So, permanently. Oh. And it was a little springy device they put in your fallopian tube. And then, and it was an outpatient procedure. I'm sorry. When I woke up this morning, I did not know that I would hear you say fallopian tube today. Well, but I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> and they put that in there. Yeah. And then... uh it scars up, so now, you know, sperm can't get to the egg, so you're not getting pregnant. Which, I like to imagine sperm has emotions, and it's in there like, damn it! Right. <laughs> Dead end! <laughs> no outlet! <laughs> well, why didn't somebody have a sign up here? <laughs> I'm just wasting a whole damn afternoon. Right. All right, go ahead. Um, but what was happening, it was causing all kinds of problems for women. <sighs> the chronic... Uh, Im immune disease kind of thing Gosh. was happening and now there's a when whole, was this they stopped making it like last year because finally i've never heard and, of this and there's this whole process that the fda unlike drugs where you have to do all these clinical trials with devices you don't have to you can get a bypass if your device is similar to one that had been approved before it's horrific what they do then there's another one like artificial hips. I got to talk to my dad artificial about this. Artificial lips. Artificial <laughs> hips. Uh, I was like those little red 
with that's candy right. Halloween lips. That's, it's big. Oh my god, it's ruined everyone. No, they do cobalt. They, instead of plastic, some of these are made with. They're dipped in cobalt. Well, cobalt will leak apparently and cause you dementia. And you know they do. I don't know, like sixty thousand hip replacements a month or something. <laughs> A lot of people are having issues that look just like Alzheimer's and dementia that is cobalt poisoning. And there's a guy, he was giving speeches in Lexington, Kentucky, by the way. And then, bless her heart, there was a lady from Nicholasville that made this documentary. What's it called? I can't think of the name and of it right it now. what's it on? I think I want to say Max. Okay. It's a documentary unknown title possibly on max you got to check it out yes bless her heart they do you've heard of a mesh yes like okay a bladder mesh yes that holds everything up in right there. Yeah. well uh, these guys started using it way too much well what happens when you uh, not just for the bladder but for other things oh my god this was the most horrific story that uh the mesh would oh, everything dear. would scar around it and it was it was horrific what it does. And then they interview her poor husband. And when she finally is healed up enough to go back to Congress with her oh. husband, he she jumps out in for of another bed oh. screaming because <gasps> he goes, you've cut me. <gasps> and she did <gasps> because the mesh was poking through. One of these devices was so bad. Oh, oh, oh. And the other thing... I wish this episode came out closer to Halloween. This is a horror show. Oh, yeah. And there's no removal for it because it integrates. The mesh integrates with your organs and, and flesh and tendons and muscles and all of that. You can't take it out. And she just has chronic pain the rest of her life. Because uh, it wasn't approved properly. You're telling me Big Pharma isn't out to help people? It's worse. Big big device. Big device. Big device is That's worse than big pharma. What? And here's the other thing. Yeah. You like that? I did. I like that. Thank you. Mm. It'd have been funnier if you said Peter Dinklage. That's what they call Peter Dinklage. The other thing I is, love Peter Dinklage. We all and Shaq. Love, you know the Da Vinci machine's supposed to be the most wonderful thing ever. Except these guys. These, oh yeah, like robotics. These for sales surgery. guys were encouraging doctors to go ahead and start using the machine, and it's supposed to be like a two or three year tutelage on it to make sure it works correctly that you can operate i did wake it. up this morning and know i'd hear you say tutelage <laughs> yes you you have to be proficient on the machine right, like right. 200 procedures one of the doctors said i didn't feel good until i did almost 200 procedures on it well some of these guys are jumping in after week two okay and so a lot of they do hysterectomies on the da vinci yeah well this was the most horrific story for whatever reason they're not sealing things up good because they don't know how to work the robot. And I'm kidding you not. Women were losing their guts. Yeah. What like, do you mean? They would have incredible pain. Maybe a week or two after the procedure, they go to the bathroom, look down, and there's their colon hanging out. Their pelvic floor would just collapse and fall out. They I had fear, dozens I of women I telling this okay. story. All right. That's horrible, but I fear yes. that we've reached the line <laughs> that we no longer need to cross on this fun, upbeat podcast. Well, I just love your, you know, Pollyanna attitude. Let me go get checked out and feel great about whatever these people recommend. Always. There's a happy medium, you troll. I'm just saying. So you saying. think because on um, the things that happen to these women is horrible, but the percentage of that happening compared to the percentage of women that have successful surgeries because their cancer or other life-threatening illness has been found, yep. I'd say that percentage is much lower, these horrific things. I would rather, and yeah, seek a second opinion, all that, but I'd rather find it than be afraid to go to the doctor because this horrible thing might happen to me. No, I'm not saying be a. I, you have to no, do you want me to certain be things. No. But when you mentioned percentage, yeah, 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 yeah. guess what my percentage is of a malpractice? 100%. Because it happened to me. I know, but that's not a hun That's your. That is the biggest bunch of shit I've ever heard. I know that happened to you. Yeah. I'm very sorry. Yeah. But that's what I'm just I mean. not going to live in fear like you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes! Oh my yes, god! Yes! Yes! Oh. You're so afraid 
Wade, you're oh, going to get a horrible God. thing done to you. You're never going to go to the doctor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at you. Of uh, all, man the, up all, all the dumbassery <laughs> statements and lies you've ever told me. Lee always that says to me, I live big, in fear. But oh basically, my God. you sh- stop yelling. Oh, I can't get over this moment. <laughs> No, I said it for your benefit. Jeez, I did it because I knew it'd be hilarious and light you up. I bet that chili is just screaming yeah. in your belly. Yeah. Or has it already left us? Yeah. Basically, you're saying you live in fear of malpractice. And you're never going to go to the no, doctor. I would go in a heartbeat, and but I would I would be, have my eyes wide open. I have mine wide open and ask a thousand. What do you think I get him to put me to sleep for a breast exam? And what? <laughs> And I would make sure of the credentials and ask a lot more questions that may irritate. Oh, I don't. I like people who are no, hobbyists. Because doctors. a lot of physicians, especially surgeons, have a God complex. Hey, and lower now your I voice. Know, you're the one who's got me all fired up here. Lower your voice. No, I'm trying to protect our listeners. Okay. I'm going to make sure you do your due diligence is all I'm saying. Okay. Because they are fallible. Yes, Lee, and we all know that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the point I'm making. <laughs> no. The but point you're making is don't go to the doctor. I never said that. Men are right and that we never go to the no, doctor. Even if we do, we'll no. create our own treatment plan. And even then, there'll be a massive issue, and suddenly you'll have a, a, a piece of wood down there in place of your penis because they'll have lobbed it right off on accident. I wish. <laughs> well, I've never been too big of a fan of mine. Meet Pinocchio. <laughs> How is meat spelled? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the name of a title. Meat. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go check that out at Blockbuster. Meat Pinocchio. Wow. Hmm. So do you want to start the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Now it feels like a time before we take viewer questions to read you a little ad. Guys, there's a lot on the line this election, from protecting the social security you've earned to supporting family caregivers. And you have the power to make the candidates listen because voters 50 and over decide elections. That's why AARP Kentucky has created an election guide with the most up-to-date information about when, where, and how to vote. Make sure the candidates hear from you this election season. Get trusted election information at aarp.org slash kyvotes. That's aarp.org slash kyvotes, paid for by AARP. There you go, friends. Uh, Now that we've settled America's health crisis, do we have any questions from... Mm. The gallery? The gallery. I don't think so. No. Then why didn't you say that? Ask me a fun question. <clears throat> a fun question? Yeah, we forgot to ask our staff for fun questions this week. We did have someone who wrote in a viewer and asked for the recipe for those three-ingredient apple muffins that we made last week. Yeah. And they were very, very well, good. Well, they wanted to know how much applesauce, I believe. And I didn't know, because Bridget goes, how much applesauce you put in there? I'm like, Bridget... Why would you ask? Well, and I'm the one who found the recipe, so I emailed the sweet lady the recipe. So if you'd like it as well, her name is Deborah. Deborah, write back. Let us know what you thought of the finished product if you've already made it. Um, Anybody else that would like the recipe, email us at ideas at leandhaley.com. It was the most easy thing you've ever made, and it was so fall and delicious. It was better the next day. Yeah, yeah. Well, because we were on a time crunch, we ate them when they were still fresh out of the oven and hot. So I'd imagine if they sat a while and kind of like, yeah, delish. All right, ask me a fun question. Since we forgot to ask our staff, and then that was our viewer question this week. Do you want to go back to Universal Studios? Yes. Would love to. I need a new butterbeer. I messed up when we went for the show a couple years ago, because I just got the butterbeer that was like a drink. They have frozen butterbeer, and I will never forgive myself for that. Well, we're not going there. Well, then why did you ask me? Because I learned today that uh, our sweet little Kelly's never been to Disney World and she's a Disney princess. She loves all things Disney. She's like watches Dances with the Stars and she's uh, Dancing with the Stars. It's Dances with Wolves and Dancing with the Stars. Is that what it is? I thought it was Dancing with Wolves. They should incorporate real wolves into Dancing with the Stars. They've already got Anna Delvey in there. She was a wolf of economy. Have you seen uh, the trailer for the new Gladiator where they fight baboons in the arena? No, but have we run out of every idea for a movie? And they're like, here's what we'll do. In the Coliseum, they used to do that. They'd bring in wild animals, and you have to fight them off. It was great entertainment. 
You're here tonight. They're featuring baboons. Oh my gosh! Let's go. <laughs> so you you all for the last four years since we've had this show. You always say, I'm going to take the staff to Disney World. And then you don't. So why are you bringing it up again? You're just going to give Kelly false hope. No. My intention is to take her. Oh, your intention. Yep. Okay. I got to figure it out. Yeah, you do. But yeah, I would love to take her. Can the rest of us go? I don't know yet. Okay. I'm not... I mean, you're out. Right. <clears throat> okay. Have you seen the Australian... <laughs> What's his name? I'll need more info. Uh, it's a little sketch. It seems older to me, but the, it's like a news show. It's like two older guys, but, you know, one's, it's. What is it's it? Like Gosh. A, it, it, there, it's a, <laughs> oh, you shut up. It's a political satirical thing. But, but What? Nothing. You want to say it? You said satirical. It's a hysterical satire. Satirical. 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 Satire. 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 Satirical. <laughs> anyway, these two guys, and he's like, uh, so let's talk about what happened with the uh, maritime industry where the front fell off the boat. He goes, well, that's unusual. He goes, yeah, but why did it happen? He goes, well, not. he goes, that's the thing. It's not supposed to. He goes, it's very safe. Maritime is, laws are, are tough, strict. He goes, well, what do you mean the regulations? He goes, well, you, you got to have operators, at least one. Anyway, it's the, he downplays the whole thing. It's it's great, mm. but the front of a tanker fell off, <laughs> he's, and he's asking this guy like, why, "I wish you'd talk why, about malpractice why, why again." Why did this happen? This sucks. You haven't seen that? <laughs> no. Oh, it's so good. Is it? Because I don't feel convinced. Yes. <laughs> no, it is. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite questions in the entire world. We may have discussed it before on the show, but I know we haven't done it on the podcast. This We used to discuss this as a family. <laughs> Lee, <clears throat> if you could have no penis mm -hmm. or a fully functioning penis, but it's on your forehead, which would you choose? <laughs> wow. Hmm. Do I get to wear a hat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's there. <clears throat> So no penis at but all. But it fully functions. Yeah. Or a fully functioning penis, but it is on your forehead. Oh, I, I guess I would take the forehead deal. Now, where on the, like, right? <laughs> I'd like to think it's kind of on the side a little bit. Oh, it's on the side. Like, it's kind of above your right eye. Mm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But I could wear it like a ski cap or something. Yeah, but just like if you see a beautiful woman, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good question. Yeah. Because the first thought is like, God, that's embarrassing. It's out there. But then you're like, but to never yeah. feel the joy of the Lord again. Yeah. Well, yep, that that's it. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I would take the forehead deal, I guess. You'd have to get some custom-made toboggans. Like an eye patch. Like an eye patch for your forehead yeah. friend. A windsock. Yeah. That's really going to ruin the vibes at Disney. <laughs> well, there's Lee with his... I like the way you're looking at my head right I now. I am. I'm envisioning, imagining like, it. you'd have to wear a hat all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, well, on the other hand... What do you mean? It was same deal for you. Not with a penis, obviously. You would obviously say, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I would. Yeah. And just be happy. And just be happy, giddy and happy. <laughs> Don't yeah. have to deal with that anymore. Oh, no. Too much. Yeah. All right, guys. That is our episode today. It is? Do you not want to get to some of the questions and You comments? said they didn't send any. No, the staff has. Hell. I literally said, oh, I guess we forgot. Because I said, did anyone send a question? You said, nah. Here's a question. What kind of haunted house would scare you the most theme-wise? Oh, theme-wise. I was yeah. going to say the ones where they're allowed to touch you scare me the most. Um, I was really terrified when I was a kid of the movie The Grudge. So if it was that girl, The Grudge, with those big eyes, and she'd look at you, and it was that sound that was like... Uh, 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 that's what it was. If that was the theme, I would, Why would the, shit The movie my should pants. have been called The Reflux. Just give the girl a tongue. 
Pops. Yeah. Hmm. I Mine would be if it was themed. I th- saw it in theaters with my boyfriend. So I guess I was like middle school or high school. And I remember being like, oh, God, why have I done this? Did you hold his hand? Yeah. That's why you take a girl to a horror film. Oh, yeah. They got to reach over. Oh, I sure did. It was like a group of us. So I must have been in high school. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that movie absolutely terrified me. And then we went back later when The Grudge 2 came out. Why? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, what about you? What would be a theme that would really scare you? An audit. <laughs> You go if in, it's a guy with a binder and your finances on you it. You go in there and ah! uh, these numbers don't add up, Mr. Cruz. Oh, God. I think yours would be a room full of doctors with medical devices. <laughs> well, no, not always. See, you get, if you said nurses, it's a whole different kind of thing for me. Sir, I've got something I need to stick in your fallopian tube. Mm. Uh, what's my other question we got here? Uh what animal would each of the staff be? Haven't we already answered this? Yes, we've done this question. I think question. we did insect. No. So what animal? Uh, Bridget would be a honey badger. Yeah, she didn't give. Yeah. It, she's just like, whatever. Mm-hmm. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Nakeda would be a hyena. And I say that with love because she's a giggler like me. And I love when she gets mm. giggling. She's like, hee, so. hee, hee, hee. All right. And she and I would travel in a pack, just giggling at you when the IRS comes after you in that haunted house. What would uh, Kelly be? Like a panda? Something that is so cute. A koala. Or a koala. She'd be a koala. Yeah, I just want to hug Just hang it. Yeah, you just want to hug her all the time. Right. And she wants to hug you back. Mm-hmm. Nua. <clears throat> yeah. Man. He's something, but what would he be? Ostrich. Emu. Okay, and why is that? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm, you know, trying to match the personality and the physique. <laughs> what? Yeah. Hmm. Noah Day would be, of course, a giraffe. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Long, always leaning in. Right. You can never have a secret around Noah because he's always there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe Nua would be a baby giraffe. Okay, I think. Yeah. Well, they what there is a such a, a no an, another derivative of giraffe. What are those there called? There is. Yeah, it's a smaller giraffe. <laughs> is it like an? I want to say I don't. This I'm making up a word, but it's close. An ancola. An ancola. <laughs> Something oh, like that. Okay. You know what know. I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't know. They're like a little darker than the giraffe, but they're not quite as tall. Yeah. Whatever those things are. Sure. And then what are you? I guess I'm a lion. Oh God. <laughs> yep. What what am I? I don't know. I'm mad all the time. You're a hippo. <laughs> okay. Deadly. And what am I? I don't know. A gazelle. Just jumps, runs away. That's right. Never hangs around. I'm right here. Hmm. Well, there's no loud noises. That's, <laughs> That's true. If I get spooked, I am out of there. Oh. And then there's a dance with the stars question I'm not answering. Uh, if you could pick any hobby in the world, what would it be? That's easy. Piano. I wish I could play. Mm. Even as a hobbyist. I would like to be a long distance hiker. I don't know if that really qualifies as a hobby because it would take a lot of your time. I just finished reading a book and it was about this cabin in North Carolina. And I was just like, and it talked about the Appalachian Trail. And I was just like, you know what? People that really hike long distances are pretty cool. Yeah. By the way, this just in. Kelly did the research. I'm talking about an Okapi. A no copy. That's what. Let me see. That's what Nua would be. Oh, he's an no copy. It's distinguished from its nearest extant relative, the giraffe. Yeah, that thing. Hmm. So there you go. Well, there you go. Now we know. Now Nua's an no copy. All right. Well, right. I don't feel like I have the authority to end the episode. No, you, we're done now. I just wanted to get to the question. Well, I had said we did. We have him, and you said no. We want to thank everybody for listening today. Yes, we do. We feel like we taught you a lot. Lee screamed a lot. Should we ask for donations? 
For what? I don't know. Disney? (laughs) For Kelly's Disney trip? We we should set up a GoFundMe for Kelly's Disney trip. It's called Better Butter Beer. No, that's That's Universal, Universal. idiot. Anyway, thanks to our sponsor, Damiano, pizza, pasta, beer, bourbon as well. And our friends at AARP. Yes, and our friends at AARP. If you're interested in Damiano, again, it's 503 South Upper Street in Lexington on campus right next to Target. It is the best Italian food you can find anywhere. Go see them. They're delicious. Delicious, everyone. All right, that's going to do it this week. Um, Tune into the Lee and Haley Show. Our home market is Lexington, Kentucky. We are on Fox 56 weekdays at noon. Otherwise, check your local listings. Follow us on Lee and Haley, all our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, our YouTube channel. Have a great rest of your day. We love you. God loves you. Hang in there. Goodbye.